speaking of hurricanes, let's start back to one of the high points of your collegiate career, uh, 2002 Rose Bowl against Nebraska. I mean, you guys just dominated Nebraska from start to finish, man. How confident were you uh, Were you in, with your team going into that ball game and just easily taking care of business against the Cornhuskers? We were very confident. Um, I think the year before, uh, the year before we had played Florida in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. Uh, that was the year we uh, felt like we had the one loss. Um, we actually, uh, that was the year we beat Florida State for the first time in like five years. Mm-hmm. We were ranked the number one team, but we all had one loss. Um, I think the only undefeated team at that time was Oklahoma. And that was the year Oklahoma and um, Florida State played in the national championship. In the Orange Bowl. Yeah, so we yep. felt like we were supposed to be in that game. and uh, But they ended up putting Florida State in the national championship, and we played in the Sugar Bowl, played Florida in the Sugar Bowl, and we dominated them. And I think when that happened, it just, you know, it just took off for us. So that 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 next year, man, we were just, you know, like the, even just summer workouts, man, the way guys came in and worked their butts off, man. And it was just uh, – it was it was it was either win it all or or it was nothing, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, we were very confident in the team we had, and we had coming back that following year. Yeah, and for you individually speaking, Dre, man, you had what seven catches, one ninety nine. Uh, I they, they didn't stand a chance, and I remember that game still like it was yesterday. They kept trying to bump and run you. You were too physical at the line of scrimmage. You were just winning that easily. Your first two steps, you were getting on top of it, man. Did you think you were going to have that type of ball game? Uh, I, I, I didn't know how it would play out. Um, you know, at the time, they had the top cornerback in the country, which was uh, Keo Craver. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's all I heard all week was like, yeah. how are you going to do against him? You know, um, you know, he had all the hype and things like that. And um, Curtis Johnson, who, who was our receiver coach at the time, yeah, told me, he was like, man, we're going to throw you like three or four deep balls. So I was just like, yeah, whatever. You know, coach will tell you something, but you don't yeah. know what's really going to happen or whatever. So in practice, we were just throwing the ball deep. Every time the ball came to me, it was just a deep pass. So mm-hmm. I was just like, well, shit. I mean, evidently, they, you know, this must be the game plan. So um, I was very confident going into the game. And I was just out to prove everybody wrong because all week, all I would heard was about him and, it, yeah. and all the hype about him. So. Yeah. And I can tell you this much, Dre, you earned a lot of draft leverage and he lost a yeah. lot of draft leverage in that <laughs> ball game. You know what I mean? That, that, that ball game alone, even though going into that game, you was already a made man, in my opinion. But man, what you did on that national stage, that, that jump starts you getting in that top five, eventually getting drafted to the Houston, Texas. Where would you rank? And I'm asking you this question and I need an unbiased answer. We've had this discussion quite a few times in barbershops, hair salons. If you're a football fan, you probably talked about this when it comes to some of the best collegiate teams on the gridiron to ever do it. But that 2002 team, clearly, if you look at the NFL prospects, man, you can it's a laundry list of guys that were on that team, right? Some guys that were starters, role players, but eventually became uh, big-time significant pieces in the National Football League. Would you consider that team in 02 to be the best college team to ever do it or one of the best? I always that, say we, that that old one team that led to uh, the two o two uh, Rose Bowl. Yeah, I always say we were the best. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I mean, I, I think if you just look at the talent on that team alone, um, you know, you had guys like you know, God rest his soul, Sean Taylor and yeah, Andrea Rowe, Kellen Winslow, Roscoe Parrish, um, Willis McGee was playing fullback in that game. Um, yeah, Frank Gore. You had guys that were on that team who wasn't even getting in the game. They were just playing special <laughs> teams at the time. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you just look at the talent on that team, alone, I don't think you can find uh, – you can match a team like that, just talent for talent, guy for guy. Um, if you look at the first-round draft picks alone on that team, you know, it was crazy guys drafted alone on that team. You've you never seen nothing like that happen before. So um, I always say I, I feel like it's the best team ever. What was the practices like for you guys? Talking about mentioning some of the names on those on both sides. <laughs> I can imagine the practices were hell, right? Man, practice was crazy, man. Um, you know, you had so much talent on the field. I, I remember sitting and talking with scouts, and they was like, you know, y'all practice is like an NFL practice. Mm-hmm. 
hey, just just with so much talent, the the way we practice, how fast we practice, like everything was, you know, Coach Coker used to always tell us we only gonna be out here as long as y'all want to be out here. Mm-hmm. So the tempo was always like at a pace, man, like a crazy pace. And uh, you know, it was it, it was fun, man, but at the same time, we knew we were competing against guys in practice that was gonna be better than better than the guys we played on um on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, competition, your quarterback was a guy who got the job done, but he seemed to be, you know, slept on a little bit. Uh, talk about Ken Dorsey. Of course, you you uh, you two guys shared that uh, co-MVP for that national championship game. But why do you think a lot of people slept on Ken Dorsey throughout his time there at Miami? Because Ken Dorsey wasn't the flashy guy. You know, mm-hmm. he, he just did things the right way. And, you know, if it came down to checking the ball down to the running back, if he had to check it down to the back five times, that's what Dorsey was going to do. He never did uh, anything crazy. You know, he just played the game the right way, real quiet guy. Um, and just an all-around great dude. And I think he didn't really get his just due because of the talent that he had around him also. You know, because, you know, most people would say, well, anybody could have, you know, did what he did with that talent. But I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that because – you know, at the end of the day, the quarterback is the one who's, you know, basically, you know, orchestrating everything. So if you're not making the right plays with the players that you have, then you don't win. No doubt. Quarterbacks are important. And like you said, he just he wasn't flashy, but boy, he was consistent. He got the job done and he made plays. You guys had an outstanding, prolific like connection down there in Miami. 